Hello and welcome back to my channel. Oh my goodness. Th was this for anyone else? Question. Poll. No, we don't. I don't know how to do a poll on YouTube. So just question. For, was was January like the longest month of existence ever for anyone else? I feel like January went on for uh, for a lifetime, and I don't. I don't think I'll ever get any of that time back. This month has been really exciting for me because I've. I feel like for the first time I've really do like dove dove doven dove. This is a channel about books and words. <laughs> First time I've really jumped into YouTube uh, and really started making a lot more YouTube content, and I have had so much fun doing it, um, from board game content to scrapbooking content, and now um, this is going to be my first bookish video um, since my start of the year bookish video. I'm hoping to get at least... Um, to be able to do like th two vid book videos a month, like something that is, uh, you know, my monthly wrap-up, as well as something else... We're working on it. We're getting there, slowly but surely. <laughs> but on that note, today is my monthly wrap-up for January. So today I'm going to be sharing with you everything that I read in January. And looking at this stack, it, it's a very weird month of books for me. I don't. I, I kind of went with what I did in December, which was just kind of pick random things to read based on my mood read. A lot of, a lot of people are like, oh, that's what mood read. When I explained how I read in January, and for me, I thought it was like revolutionary. Everybody, was, every, everybody in my comments was just like, that's just mood reading. You just mood reading, babe. It's not, you're not fancy or special. <laughs> read some really interesting things. I read, I, I have some books that I loved. I have at least one book that I hated. <laughs> we will talk about that when we get to it. Um, but it was a really interesting month of reading for me. I'm excited to share it with you. And then towards the end of the video, I'm also going to share with you the three manga series that I have been reading uh, and just give you some little quick impressions of those so far. I'm not going to give you like bite by bite every single volume. So I think once I finish each series, I want to do a video kind of doing a wrap up, like talking about the series as a whole and my thoughts on it. But for now, I'm just going to give you a quick little, this is the manga I'm reading and this is what I think so far, uh, just to show you kind of what I've been doing. But we're going to start with the books and then we'll get to the manga later. They're all books, but you know what I mean. But we're going to start with the novels and then we'll get to the manga towards the end. <laughs> as if this is ever going to be a fancy channel. Before I jump in, I do want to mention a couple things. Of course, please make sure to like and subscribe. I'd love to see you back here for more of whatever this is. And then I also want to let you know, down below, I'm going to put three links for you to check out. One is my Discord channel. It is completely free to join if you want to jump in there. It's got places to talk about board games, places to talk about books, places to talk about, I don't even know what else is in there. You can post a picture of your pet or the food you ate. Got all kinds of fun things going on there. I'm also going to post my Easy Cat Press Bindery subscriber community, where we are working together to publish House of Frank, a new book that will be out later this year. That's where you can see updates on the book, the cover design. We're about to release the, the full cover for the first time. I'm very, very excited. It's so beautiful. I just got to see it yesterday. But I also post exclusive content there as well. It's basically like Patreon, except more bookish. And then the third thing I'll put down there is my Fable Book Club, which, book club? My Fable Book Club which is completely free to join. Um, every month we have a book and we all read it together and you can leave comments and talk about the book and discuss the book with other people. Uh, so I'll leave a, a link to that as well so you can join us in my Fable Book Club. Now that all of that, all of that silliness is out of the way, all of the please click on the here and the do with the what, we can jump in. Here's everything that I read in January of 2024. All right, let's start off. Speaking of Easy Cats Book Club, this was the Easy Cats Book Club pick for January of this year. So this is uh, A Strange and Stubborn Endurance. I don't know why this title is so hard for me. Every time I go to think about this book, my brain just says, a blink, a blink, a blink, a blink. Like, I just can't put the words together. This was our Easy Cats Book Club pick for, for January. And Overall, I really liked it, but I did go through like some very large hills and valleys of liking this book. So when I first started reading it, um, essentially this is, so this is a gay romanticy. What I will tell you is on the very first page of this book, there are some trigger warnings, some things you might want to look out for in this book. And you need to heed their advice because I think every single trigger in this book happened within the first like chapter and a half. Like they were they were not playing around. They jumped right into things. So we follow our main character. We follow two gentlemen, and uh, and they both live in these different nations. And basically, the the one that we start with, he, he is about to be married off to this other kingdom to a girl. But you know, he likes boys, and he has this lover, and he is essentially. I'm going to use the word attacked by his lover, but it is much more than that. But just for the sake of YouTube, I'm going to say attacked. And he is caught that they are caught doing that. And so he is sent off to um, this new land. And they essentially um, 
decide to marry him off to a man in that new land instead of a woman, and he's never met this person before. What's interesting here is that the land he is from is very conservative, um, so they basically disown him, and the land he's going to is actually, like, very open-minded, but they've also got some problems of their own, because there's, like, assassination attempts, and there's, like, some unrest in the, in the community, like, he's going into a whole bunch of political drama. Um, so he gets sent there and he meets this other guy and, you know, they're, they're kind of like tiptoeing around each other because, you know, they just met each other and now they have to get married. It's a lot. And on top of that, there's like all this, all this political issues going on and there's assassination attempts and all of this. I will say this book did fall into, it kind of falls into the miscommunication trope where essentially they just aren't talking, if they just would talk about their problems, things would get settled. And normally I'm not a fan of that, but in this book, I kind of was able to excuse it. And the main reason was, I swear, there were many times where they tried to talk about their issues, okay? There were many times where they were almost there and then someone would burst in and be like, there's been a murder <laughs> or something bad has happened. Now, that ended up making me not hate the miscommunication aspect of it, but I will say so many chapters of this book end with like, let's settle down for the day, and then someone bursts in and is like, something terrible has happened. Like, it happens a lot, <laughs> actually, to the point where I was like surprised any time there was a chapter that didn't end with something terrible happening. I really liked the two main characters. I really liked the world and uh, the the way that, you know, especially with having like these two kingdoms with very different ideals. I think the juxtaposition of that was really good. And of course, it relates a lot to our real real world. I think for me, this book felt a little too long, like at a certain point when when it started to feel repetitive that at the end of every chapter, someone would barge and be like, there's been a catastrophe. Like w at the point where I felt like that was happening over and over again, I was like, this book needs to end. And there was still like 200 pages left. <laughs> so the book does feel a little overly long. And I, I just, I don't really feel like it needed to be. I also found the book to be fairly predictable. Like I predicted the kind of twist at the end pretty early on. And so then by the time it got there and I was like thinking maybe there's more to it. And then there wasn't. And I was like, oh, okay. But overall, this was like a four out of five for me. Like I did really like most aspects of the book. I just feel like it could have been shorter. And I feel like it didn't need, it didn't need all, it didn't need to be as long because a lot of it was just kind of like tacked on drama that just for drama's sake. And to that end, I will say the book is a little melodramatic. Like it's almost so and and listen don't get me wrong the the issues the book is dealing with and the things it's discussing that the characters are going through are very serious and i think it's really incredible that the author was able to kind of approach these really intense subjects in a way that made us really care for these characters and seeing them kind of like find you know common ground with each other despite the trauma that one of them had been through i loved all that i thought it was really beautiful but there are times where the book just feels so Oh, like almost like soap opera levels of drama <laughs> to where I was like, okay, take it down a notch. <laughs> um, so I don't know. It's This book was very like love hate for me and really not even love hate, but just like love. Eh. Like there were times where I, like when I first started this book, the first 150 pages, I was all in, like I could not put it down. But then it got to a point where I felt like things were really starting to drag. And I just wish the pacing of like the middle chunk of the book could have been better or faster or more or just less pages. I don't know. The beginning of the book I thought was really good. And the overall, like, where we leave the characters, I think was really great. And there were a lot of really great moments in between there. I just think overall, the book was a little, it was a little too much in several regards. It was a little too long. It was a little too dramatic. And it was a little too many people barging indoors and screaming, there's been a murder. It happened a lot. Let me tell it happened a lot. Okay. Next book. Now this is going to, this, this book looked chunky, but this, we didn't, I did not read this whole book. <laughs> Settle down. So a friend of mine who you, if you've been here a long time, you may know that last year, uh, a friend of mine and I were trying to read, um, uh, a different classic every month. And we kind of fell off of that just because she got really busy. I got really busy and we just, we just kind of fell off. So in January, I was like, let's get started again. So she wanted to read the first Sherlock Holmes book. Uh, the very first of the, of them, which is a study in Scarlet. So I was like, yeah, I'm down. I've actually never read Sherlock Holmes. Let's do it. And so we read, we decided to read this together. It's very fast read. I mean, I think I read it in like a day and a half. And overall, I thought it was pretty good. I think it's interesting because everything I'm about to say, if you know anything about Sherlock Holmes, nothing I'm about to say is going to be very shocking, right? Sherlock himself is a very obnoxious and yet endearing character. 
Um, John Watson is is delightful, and 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 you really you know you really like him. The overall mystery of everything was really good. I think this thing that took me by surprise is that this book is split up into two parts. So there's a part one and a part two, and the first like almost half of part two is so wildly different. I don't want to spoil anything, but it's about like different characters in a different country to the point where I was like, this must be like just another story. Like, you know, I was thinking maybe back then they would like come out with one thing and then print like two stories in it. And then it was like back to back, like, like a double feature. Right. But then it turns out it's not two stories. It actually is all related to the original case in, in part one. And so it was all one thing. And I thought that was really cool because when I got to the end of part one, I was like, oh, that wrapped up pretty simple. Like, okay, I, I expected more because I just have this idea of Sherlock Holmes in my head that he's got this big, long, like, how it all came together and he's somehow figured out, like, all these wacky details. And there weren't any wacky details. Like, it was pretty cut and dry. Like, oh, that's the guy who did it and uh, I'm very smart, Sherlock Holmes, da 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 credits roll. But then when you got into the second part and you really saw the backstory of how everything happened and, and what he had figured out, that was when the story got really cool. And I will say, I just, I wasn't expecting for it to go off on this whole crazy side adventure that had n at initially, at first glance, nothing to do with the initial story. And I thought that was really cool. Like, I, it's, it is rare for me to be really surprised by a story. I, I talk about this sometimes, which is like when people watch my reaction videos on TikTok or Instagram, they'll be like, oh, you, you must have seen this before because you're guessing everything. But it's, it's not that I've seen it before. It's that I went to school for film writing and directing. And so I studied in college story and crafting story. And when you've studied story craft and the, and, you know, the, the way that stories are built, it's hard to be surprised because it's pr because you start to see it in the three act structure. You start to see the points lining together. It's it's it becomes a lot easier to predict what's going to happen. Like when we watch TV shows and movies, I most of the time can predict what's going to happen long before it happens because it's just good storytelling, right? And this surprised me, and I think that was really exciting. It's rare that I'm like fully completely taken aback surprised by a book um and this really surprised me in that way that the at that part two was like kind of a bait and switch it was like oh it's not it's not actually anything to do with oh but wait it is oh but wait it is and i thought that was really cool i think we may read more of sherlock holmes because we both really really liked this and i think we want to enjoy more our book for february we're going to be reading the princess bride um which is exciting because i've seen the movie but i've never read the book and so that'll be what we're reading for i don't know if you would consider that a classic i don't know i let her pick because i it's one less decision i have to make for the month is letting her choose what we're going to read. So she said Princess Bride. I said, let's do it. But first book of Sherlock Holmes, definitely liked it. And now I have this whole tome. So at some point, I'll probably have to read more of it because I have this whole thing to read. But it was it was really, it was exactly kind of what I hoped it was. And it wasn't a disappointment. Sometimes I feel like you see so many things about a classic, like so many iterations of it down the line in the future that we now live in. And so when you go back to the source, it ends up being disappointing. This was not disappointing. I found it really enjoyable. So I'll definitely have to read more of Sherlock Holmes in the future. The first book that I read in 2024 was Piranesi. I'm just not going to tell you a lot about this book. And that's not because I don't want to, but because I think the best way to read this book is to not know anything about it going in. What I will tell you is it is we, we, we start the story with a man who is living in this we'll call it a house, with many corridors and many areas. And he only knows of one other living person who's there. And he is sort of like living out his life in this place. And this is one of those books that you will not know what's going on until about 75% of the way in. And then suddenly when it's revealed, you'll be like, oh, it reminded me, I told my friends who recommended this to me that it reminded me a lot of Gideon the Ninth. And they were like, in what way? Because it is in no way is the story similar, but the story structure is really similar in that you spend a lot of the book just kind of like going along for the ride and really not having any idea what's happening. And then when it all comes together, you you you're it, you have this like light bulb moment where it all comes together and you are like, oh, that's what's happening. And that's really it's always a very exciting moment. I think this book pulled it off very, 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 very well. 
It is a very thinky book where every little detail matters. So if you're going to read this one, this is not a casual read at the beach, okay? This is a read that you sit down because you really want to, like, take some, like, brain power to, to really get into. And it is worth it. I mean, it's not a very long book. So that's the good, the good news is that you are – it's a very thinky book. It's a very psychological book. But it's not a book that you have to be, like, thinky or psychological for too long. I like that. It was, like, a good little – little mental, not a mental break, but a little, a uh, little mental exercise to read this and kind of follow along with this story. It was very interesting. I don't know if I loved it. Like I didn't walk right away from this book being like, wow, that was incredible. And it was, I, but I walked away from this book feeling more like, wow, that was really interesting. Um, just as like a, a practice of how stories are told. And uh, I think there are, there are stories if when you read this, it's going to remind you of a lot of other stories. And so I, I liked that aspect, that there were parts of the story that kind of made me thoughtful about other stories that I've read that were kind of in a similar vein as this. I'm being a little vague because I don't want to spoil anything for you, but um, this book really gave me a lot to think about and a lot to contemplate, and I just really liked the way that it weaved its story together and the way that it revealed things and the way that it crafted this narrative of following this man in his house and sort of seeing as he, seeing him explore this house and suddenly, you know, kind of come to realize who he is and where he is and what's happening. It was very good and it was very well written and it was just a really, really, really well done narrative. And so if you like more thinky stories, you know, if I, if when I said Gideon the Ninth, you were like, oh, tell me more, you will probably really like this. It's one of those books that's a little bit more cerebral, but it is very rewarding. Like it really rewards you for taking a little bit more time to like mentally consume this book and what it is. It really rewards you in the end for that. So I really liked this a lot. This was Piranesi. Okay, so this book, I feel like I've had this series on my radar for a while and just haven't gotten to it, but the newest one in the series released this month, and that kind of was my sign to pick up the first one. So this is Every Heart a Doorway. This um, is part of a series, and The Wayward Children, I think, is what it's called. And this is the first book in the series, very short. So I th my understanding is that every book in this series is self-contained, but they all sort of interrelate to each other. So you can read them, I think, in any order, uh, but they all sort of hint to each other. So I'm going to be reading them in publication order. I got the second one. I just haven't read it yet, but I'll probably try to read it in February. This initial story is basically about a home for people who have, for like young people who have gone to other worlds. You know, think of the kids who went to Narnia or whatever other crazy world, like Alice, who went to Wonderland, who go to these worlds and then end up back in our world. And it's almost like a place where they can go to recover, to like get them back into, it's like a recovery house for people who have gone to other worlds and need to like acclimate back to this world. And wow, what a cool concept it was. And I loved, you know, they, they really, the author did a really great job of sort of showing that the the lore of this book and the world building is that there are different worlds, right? There are worlds that are more gothic and dark. Like the main character, she just got back from a world that was like um, the, the underworld. And there are worlds that are filled with lollipops and candy and are very whimsical. And then there are worlds that are more like magic and knights and sorcery. And then there are other worlds that are, you know, dark and creepy. And it's, it's you know, there are all these different worlds and it kind of like splits them up into different types and different categories. I love really detailed world building. Uh, give it to me now. When pe You know when people are like, oh, too much world building, just get to the action. I'm like, no, no, give me all the world building. That is very much me. I love really intricate, detail, detailed, well thought out world building. And this had that, a ton of that. To the point that I think the actual plot of this book, like the actual story of what is happening to the main characters in this book was like, eh, whatever. <laughs> like when I think about this book, I read this book pretty early in the month. And when I think back on it, the things I think about are not the actual plot points of what is happening in the book. What I think back to are is the world building and the characters themselves. Like, I really liked the characters a lot. Um, and I think about the, con the... I think about this book more conceptually than the actual, like, wow, I really liked that moment in, that, in the story where the characters did this. Like, the characters didn't do anything that I was like, wow, that was amazing. But I loved all the characters because their personalities were just so interesting to me and the worlds that they were coming from and the way that all of this interconnected and this house where they're all like meant to live together despite where they've been and kind of the 
trauma or even like the the coming back to a normal world after being somewhere so magical and like what that does to a person all of that like the psychology of it i just found so interesting and so thought provoking and it just really sent my mind off in a million different directions which is why i'm so excited i think there's 9 books in the series now and i'm really excited to read them because this this just opened not to like ha you know obviously it's a doorway on the book but this really this book really does open a lot of doors for stories in this universe and i want to i want to see all of them and i've seen some of the covers of like the future books there's like one with dinosaurs like they just look so exciting so i'm really excited to kind of dig deeper into this series and see what it has to offer i know there's people who love this series that are like die hard fans of it and i'm excited to learn more about why but just based on the first one i i i already kind of understand it it's it's a really cool world it's a really cool concept um, I'm surprised there's not like a Netflix show for this because it seems like it would be perfect for that. Maybe there is and I just don't know. Somebody in the comments is going to be like, there already is, dummy. And I'll be like, oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> but I think it would make like a perfect Netflix show. Um, but yeah, this was really cool. If you haven't checked it out yet, I definitely would give the first one a try. There's probably later ones that people like more, but I really like this as a, as a start to it. I feel like it really helped kind of ground me in like what this series was going to be about and what this world was all about. So that was really cool. Okay, this was one of my favorite books that I read this month. This was A Circle of Stars. This is by Craig Montgomery. This is an, uh, I believe, an, in, an indie title. I believe this was self-published. This, oh, this was so good. Let me tell you, this was so good. I've been following Craig on TikTok and Instagram for a while. Um, and it was really exciting to read this because I feel like I've kind of had this on the back burner for a while. So this is about a young man. This is, I would say, I would categorize this as like older YA or younger new adult. Um, this is about a young man who has come out to his family and his family has basically kicked him out. And in coming out, because he basically got forced out of the closet, he then ended up like breaking up with his girlfriend because she didn't know because he was he's in that phase where he's like just figuring himself out. And she was very heartbroken. And so he ends up basically on the street. All of a sudden, he gets attacked by these like ma like magical wolf things. I'm sh they have a better name. I'm just like <laughs> I can't remember what it was. He gets attacked, and then he gets saved by these people, and they're like, "Wow, you have powers!" And so we're gonna take you away from here because you have a lot of powers, and and that is not normal. So they end up taking him to another planet. Because it turns out that he is one of these people that escaped Earth long, long ago who has, like, powers that are kind of based around the Zodiac. So each, like, house is based on, like, a different Zodiac sign. Each of them has a specific gift. Like, some of them can, like... Um, you know, work on people's emotions and some of them can heal others and some people can heal themselves and some people um, are strong and, you know, they all have these different powers. So what makes him special is that it turns out that he is able to channel all of them. He is the rare type of person that comes once in a generation who can channel all the powers. So they bring him to their planet where they basically get to, which is like, they're like living inside of a moon because the surface of the moon is like really dangerous. And so they bring him there to basically teach him how to be amazing. And when getting there, he, of course, he meets a boy, right? As, as we all do when we get abducted by aliens. But he finds out that there's like, there's a lot more going on here. There's a lot of like political things that are happening in this uh, world that are really not great. And a lot of the people in power are using their power to do really bad things and to basically subjugate and control parts of the population, especially there's one like house that they've basically just like put under lock and key because a long time ago they started, they started problems. And so now they're just punishing everybody who has that ability. And so he is sort of seeing all this and is like, this is not good. Like this is not, I was brought to this place thinking it would be better than my home to be basically like their savior and their way of doing things is actually like really bad. And so there's kind of this whole like, figuring out where it started and why it's happening and kind of breaking down the political system of this world as he tries to basically be a true savior for the people and not just like a figurehead that the government uses to control the people, which is, you know, what they want to do. And then, of course, he's, there's a boy, <laughs> you know. Um, so it's got all of that, but it just was like so fun. And the 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 magic system and the of this like Zodiac system was just really, really cool. Um, I really liked the characters. I really liked watching them. I really liked watching them kind of learn about each other and fall for each other because they very much felt like two very different people. And and I feel like a lot of times, sometimes in YA book, the two main characters can feel almost like the same person a little bit. But in this, they felt very different. And so watching them learn to care for each other 
was really special. And there was just so much about this book and this story. And there was so much about it that was so meaningful, especially in our current, like the current things that are happening in the world. I felt like this book really resonated with a lot of that. Um, I really liked everything about it. I loved the story. I loved the world. I loved the the powers and the abilities. And I loved the kind of like political intrigue side of it and the magic. And there's, I, li I have nothing bad to say. I like this book so much. And I believe it's a duology. So there's going to be a second book. However, this book has a very defined beginning, middle, end. So you could this book could fully be read standalone but i'm super excited that there's going to be another book but i really like that you know if you've been here you know i complain sometimes where i'm like why do these books not have an ending they just leave off in the middle of act two and then you have to pick up the next one to read more and i hate that it drives me crazy i love that this has a full structured story within it there's so much here there's so much good content and this was just this was so good <laughs> you guys like this was so good it just Honestly, I had this point because if you if you know me, you know I hated the Zodiac Academy. This is what I wanted the Zodiac Academy to be. This was so, so fantastic. And there was just so much to love about it. And I highly recommend it. I, I, I recommend it. If you want like a little bit of like sci-fi slash fantasy that's also gay, that's also got political intrigue, it's got a little bit of everything. I loved it. Highly recommend A Circle of Stars. Okay, okay. We talked about a book I loved. Let's talk about a book I didn't love. <laughs> You may have heard of this book. It's called The Atlas Six. And wow, when I tell you I hate read this book, I... <laughs> so here's the thing. I'm terrible at DNFing or like do not finishing a book, like stopping in the middle and just giving up on it. And I, I applaud people who do. I think it's great. Save your time. Move on. Get your peace. Live your best life. But I am not that person. And a few people had told me that the ending of this book made it worth it. So I was like, all right, I'm going to stick... I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to stick with it till the end. Oh my God. This book made me so upset. Now, I now to its credit and to everybody else's credit, the last like couple of chapters were really cool. And the twist I thought was really well done. But man, I, I hated every single, every single character in this book is just hot and mean. Like that is the character, that that is the character traits of every character in this book. Hot and awful. Like every character, every single one, even the ones that are like kind of not the worst are still the worst. Everyone in this book sucks, man. They're all, there's no one to root for because I hated all of them. And they all just like go around being hot and awful the entire book. Like every time they do something, it's it's purely out of like self-interest, being selfish, making sure they're hot, making sure they're awful. That's the Atlas Six. And the ending it does have a really cool twist and it does like leave it open for a really exciting like what's to come next but I don't care what comes next because I don't care what happens to these characters because they're the worst. There, there's a whole plot line. This is really not a spoiler, but early on in the book, you learn that basically the way that this, 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 um, secret organization works is they recruit six people and one of those six people has to die. Okay. And you kind of learn throughout the story why that is. So I won't spoil that part for you, but I texted a friend halfway through this book and I was like, you know, which one of the six I want to die? All of them. <laughs> I can't, I couldn't stand any of them. Oh, they were uh, the worst, the worst. I do think, I think the book is, I like the writing of the book. I like the dark academia vibes of the book. Um, there, there were moments, there were little moments where I thought, wow, that is a really well-written passage. Like that was really well done. But, but the entire, all of it is wrapped up in this story about hot, terrible humans. And I think there's an audience for that, right? Like there are some people who really love stories about just terrible, pe terrible, hot people. I mean, that is literally like all of reality TV is I, I feel like is about terrible, hot people, right? So I'm not saying you won't love this. You might. I just didn't. It was not for me. It made me angry. I literally had to take a break, like uh, 150 pages in, I took a break to read like two other books. And then I came back to it because I just couldn't read another page of these hot people being awful to each other. I was tired of it. I came back to it. I made it to the end and I was like, that was a cool twist. Get out of my life. So that was the Atlas Six. And not for me. I will not be continuing my adventure in this world. No, thank you, ma'am. All right, next up is another indie book. Um, a friend of mine, Evan, who runs a podcast called Book Reviews Kill, he recommended this series to me. It's seven books long. This first one is called Into the Labyrinth. The series is called Mage Errant. I really liked this a lot, actually. So this has, like, the magical school trope. So we follow um, a young man who is going to this magical school. I think this book is kind of cool because it tackles the idea that, you know, some students 
it's it's not that they aren't good at learning it's that they've never had a teacher who understands how to teach them but it tackles that concept in a magical school setting and I thought that was quite cool and quite unique. And so we follow a character who's basically doing terrible in school. And he, at some point in their magical school year, um, students get recruited by, like, um, scholars to to basically train under them. He's like, I'm not going to get recruited by anybody because I'm the worst. And he gets recruited by the librarian along with two other students. And the librarian is like, you guys only think you're terrible because your teachers don't know how to teach you, but you're actually really strong and I'm going to teach you how to harness what makes you amazing and make you special. It's just that this school is trying to teach everyone exactly the same and you guys don't learn exactly the same, so I'm going to fix that. I, how cool is that of a concept? Because that is something that a lot of students do deal with in schools, that the curriculum is made for everybody, so a lot of times for people with special learning needs, it doesn't really click with them. And to see a book kind of approach that in such an interesting way, I thought that was very cool. The world building, super, super interesting as far as this world is concerned, and where the different backgrounds, like at one point early on in the book, the three main characters kind of like learn about each other's backgrounds, and all of it was so interesting. It made me like really excited, because I think in future books, we're going to leave this school, kind of see more of the world, and that made me really excited, because I thought just that little element of like a little sneak peek of what's out there in the world was really exciting. Eventually, they do end up in a labyrinth and have to survive. And I don't know, there, this book was not long enough for me. I'm so glad that there are seven books in the series because I got to the end of this and I was like, I need more. I need more. I need to know more. I need to know more. Um, and just the different kinds of magic, the different ways that they're using magic. I really liked the three main characters. They are very much like, you know, outcasts, like outcasts of society type of characters. But I really came to love all of them by the end. I thought they were great. Um, the book does ha does deal fairly a bit with like bullying. I mean, we're dealing with outcasts here. And so, of course, there are going to be kids at their school that treat them like crap. So just know that going into the story, if that's something you're not into, you might not love this because it does deal pretty heavily with that. But I really, 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 really liked this a lot. And I can't wait, wait to read the next one. And like I said, I think all seven books are already out. Uh, the series is called Mage Errant. I already got the second book. I'm going to probably try and read it in February. I have a lot to read in February, so we'll see. It might be a March read, but I'm really excited to continue on with this series because this was a really great starting point for it. Uh, I read this graphic novel this month called Squire, and I, I, I made a TikTok about this. I don't have a lot more to say about it than I said there, but this was really, really great. Um, this follows a young girl who is... Um, Basically, her people have, uh, they are really looked down upon by society, and um, she gets a chance to become, to like join the army and become a knight, um, which is really for her people um, the only way that they can maybe get full citizenship. So she like goes for it and kind of hides her identity and goes through the process of trying to become a knight. And she's like really into it. And of course, as things go, she starts to figure out that the world that she is trying to be a part of is actually really terrible to her people and her family and her culture. And it is completely by design that her people are being like crushed into the dirt, basically. And the people in power are using propaganda and things like that to control the masses and make them just really hate her people. And... So along the road, she kind of starts to ask herself, like, what am I fighting for? Um, and you have, like, other characters that she becomes, you know, friends with. And and you, ha you see, like, how she interacts with them and how she gets to know them. And you see her trials as she tries to get stronger and, and be seen by these people these in charge that she wants to be seen by so that she can achieve this level of status. Only to realize, maybe I don't want to be part of that, right? I think if you like stuff like Avatar The Last Airbender, you'll probably really like this. My one little complaint I had about this was that, I don't know if it's the paper or how they printed this, but scenes that are like at night or in the dark felt really dark. So if you can, you might want to read this digitally, like with a backlight. I think that would be the best way to experience this, honestly, because some of the art felt so dark that I had a hard time telling what was going on. When it was light, it was fine. But if it was like a nighttime scene, I was like, what are they doing? It was like watching Game of Thrones all over again, but in a, but in a graphic novel form. This is young adult. Uh, it's it's definitely like young adult friendly. I I really liked this a lot. I think uh, other than that, the darkness issue, the the actual art itself is gorgeous and really leads itself to like like I said, if you like stuff like Avatar: The Last Airbender or Korra, I think you'll really like this because it has kind of a similar vibe and a similar feel. Different story, obviously but artistically has kind of a similar look to it. This was really, really excellent. The ending, I don't know if this is going to be standalone or not. The ending definitely leaves room for a sequel, and I hope there is a sequel, but it also stands on its own if you just want to read it by itself. You don't have to, like, worry about a sequel, but I definitely think there's room for more.
more with these characters. So hopefully we get that in the future. Okay, last book that I read this month, and then we'll talk about some manga. So I just this morning finished Rise of Empire, which is the second book in the Ryeria, 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 I can't say that word, Chronicles. Uh, I read the first book last month, and I loved it. Uh, as a reminder, these books are, each of the three books in the series is actually two books each. So the series initially is six books long, but each of these printed books contains two books. So this was actually books three and four. Are you still with me? <laughs> because that was a lot of numbers that just got thrown out. I am not going to share a whole lot about this because obviously saying anything about books three and four in a series is going to be a huge spoiler. But essentially what the series is about is we follow two friends that are also thieves um, as they like make their way around this fantasy world trying to basically stop government, like do their thing, make money, but ultimately they end up help trying to help like governments not fall and kingdoms stay in place and, you know, stop tyranny and all of those fun things. What I will say, this is maybe one little tiny little blip about these books, is in the in the original book, they basically, in the very first book, they basically get hired by the king's sister, the princess, the, I'm sorry, the prince's sister, the princess, um, to help stop a crown conspiracy. Like, her father has just been assassinated. She's trying to get them to help get her brother out of town so that he is not next on the list. And so that character, her name is Arista, she becomes much more prominent as the story goes along, and she has easily become my favorite character. I think watching her grow from, like, this, like, pampered little princess into just such a strong, incredible character has been so fun. I love her so much. She has become such an amazing character, and watching that transformation is just so rewarding. And every book, she gets, she, like, kind of gets to the next level. Like, in my head, she, to me... She's almost like the main character. Like, she, I care more about her storyline than the two friends, which I know is horrible, but I love them, right? Like, I love these two, these two, wonderful, love them. Um, Royce and Hadrian, love them. But Arista is where the heart of the story is. I just love her so much, and I can't wait to see. Uh, there's one more book in this trilogy, which is books five and six, and so I'll probably read that pretty soon because I want to see how all of this ends. And this kind of leaves on a cliffhanger. But I am so excited to see where she ends up by the of all the characters. She is the one that I can't wait to see where she ends up by the end because I think it's going to be the most rewarding storyline of the entire series. So yeah. Okay. Currently reading three manga that I want to talk to you about. Let's talk about this one first. This is Dragon Ball Z. You might have heard of it. Uh, so back in the at the end of 2023, Carl and I read through all of Dragon Ball and. I really, really quite, well, I enjoyed some of it. Um, I'm going to make a video at some point talking about all of it because there, there are definitely elements of the original Dragon Ball that are so problematic that my eyes like fell out of my eyeballs. But we wanted to read it just to see kind of how it gets to Dragon Ball Z. And now that we're reading Dragon Ball Z, I am shocked to say that I am really loving this. I think when I was younger, I had so many friends that were into Dragon Ball Z and I just didn't get it. I was like, why do you care about this? And now here I am as an adult reading it and I kind of get it. It's very fun. It's very like teenage boy action. I'm stronger than you. I'm going to beat you up. But I don't know. I'm like into it for some reason. There's, I love the artwork. I think the artwork is so fun and so, so unique. And watching these characters like find ways to get stronger. Like at one point, Goku like goes to hell to train in hell to become stronger so that he can come back to the world and be stronger because he trained in hell. It's just so creative. And there's just so much, it's so fun and action packed. And it's a very light, fun read and I, I kind of get it. I get why people love it so much because it's just you you it's a book that really you're really rooting for the good guys, right? Like you're like, yeah, get him, get stronger, overpower like that guy is beating you down, but you're gonna find a way to like overpower him and win the day. And it's it's just like it's very much like good guys versus bad guys and it's just really fun. It's the reason that, you know, we love comic books so much is that it's it's you have heroes that you want to root for and it's really fun to see them win the day. And this really capitalizes on all of this, which is interesting because I think Dragon Ball Z has a lot of relation to there's so many elements of it that remind me of Superman, especially like the original Superman. And of course, Dragon Ball is um, based on the Monkey King story and um, Journey to the West. Um, and seeing that, but like with this also Superman aspect to it, it's all just it's a very fun action adventure not a whole lot of thoughts. Like, it's not very thinky. There's not, like, a whole lot of... You won't be doing a lot of introspection. It's just a lot of, like, good guys beating up bad guys. And you know what? 
sometimes that's kind of fun. <laughs> The next one, which you've probably heard me rant about at this point, is A Sign of Affection. I am officially caught up with the manga. I am now patiently waiting until the next volume comes out. <sighs> oh my god, I love this so much. So this is, it is, it is a romance story. It is about a young girl named Yuki who is deaf, and she meets this guy, like, kind of has a meet cute with him on the train, and she sort of, like, falls for him, and now they're, you know, getting to know each other, and he's learning sign language, and she's learning to communicate with him in her way, and I, I love, I love a story that that has, I mean, first of all, I, I think talking about the disability representation in this is so good. I love being seeing how they um, illustrate all of the sign language. And now I'm also watching the anime where they also like animate um, a lot of the sign language, which is really cool to see. All of that is really, really well done. I love all of the characters. I love them so much. And I'm just really enjoying reading this and getting like, oh, like every time they like look at each other and then every time they like touch hands and it's so cute and I'm so into it. And it's, it's bringing out a weird side of me. And so I apologize for that, but it's so good. And I, like I said, I watching, I think the story gets really good, especially when kind of all the other characters get introduced because they all also have their own relationships that are, that they're sort of dealing with and their friendships. And there are some that are friendships and there are some that are like more than friendships and watching them all kind of navigate these as, as like early college students, I just think is so great. And, and then, like I said, I think the respect that is given to the deaf community and to sign language as a way of communication is just so special in this book. And I think there's so like, there, it's clear that the creator really cares about about getting it right um, and does so much research to get it right and I think that's really really powerful and I love it I love the I love every single one of the characters I love the story I can't wait to see what happens next I'm obsessed with this series a sign of affection it's so good and also like I said the anime just started uh, I've been watching it on Crunchyroll so if you want to watch it as an anime it's there too it is beautifully animated highly recommend last but not least I am reading through full metal alchemist um, I've read the first three volumes before but it was a long time ago so now I'm reading through it again and I am up to volume eight. I got the box set for Christmas. Um, this is really good. I think if you like, um, if you like fantasy stories that are a little crunchier with a little bit more like rules. So I also love One Piece, right? But like One Piece is like a whimsical world where like anything can happen. This story has like a lot of structure and there are a lot of rules to the magic, to the alchemy that is being used in this story. So if you like a lot of structure in your fantasy, I think you'll really enjoy this. Um, the two main characters, you know, are brothers and they've lost their mother. And so if, if you don't know the story, essentially they try to bring mom back to life, which is forbidden by alchemy. And our main character ends up losing several, like two of his limbs. And then his brother loses his entire body. And so, uh, his body has to be tied to this like metal um, suit of armor just to keep him alive. Basically, like his soul is in the suit of armor. And so watching them like kind of search the world to try and find a way to get their bodies back and then maybe even bring their mom back to life is really, really cool, really interesting. There's a, a, this also has a lot of political intrigue um, uh, because there's stuff going on with the government and there's some people like kind of trying to overthrow it. I, right now, I'm in the point where I kind of think the government is actually pretty evil in this book and maybe needs to be overthrown, but I don't I don't think the main characters have quite gotten there yet in, in their heads, but I think that may come at some point. I don't know. We'll see. We'll have to see. I'm interested to see where this story goes, but I'm really liking this as a more grounded, more um, crunchy, more thoughtful fantasy story. Like, it's really, really interesting to me so far, and I'm excited to see where it goes. I feel like by the end of February or March, I'll probably be through the whole series, and then I'll try and do a wrap-up video just talking about my experience reading the whole thing. So we'll see how it goes. But have you read Full Metal Alchemist or watched it? I know a lot of people love this. It's very popular. I'm interested to hear what you think of the series. And that is everything I read in January. Thank you so much for watching this. Let me know what you read in January. Let me know if you read any of these. Do you have any thoughts? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know all the things in the comments. I'm so interested to hear your thoughts on all the things I shared today. Um, and of course, I hope you read some amazing things in February. I hope you check out lots of amazing books. If you want to check out my book club, we're going to be reading Dawn. Um, and so I'll put a link to that down below. I'm really excited to read that with you all. Of course, I've got those links to the Discord and to my subscriber community. Make sure to like and subscribe. Blah, 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 blah. Most importantly, as we say at the end of every single one of these videos, I hope you have an awesome day. And of course, happy reading.